Hello, and thanks for your continued interest in the subject of shaft alignment. This tutorial on preliminary alignment checks and corrective measures will discuss information that will hopefully assist anyone who is responsible for installing or maintaining rotating machinery, for people who evaluate the operational or mechanical performance of machinery, and for technicians and engineers who are responsible for rotating equipment. So this information is intended for trades personnel, maintenance supervisors, training instructors, mechanical procedure writers, vibration analysts, engineers, maintenance managers, and any interested operations personnel. The major topics in this tutorial will discuss the basics of how rotating machinery is attached to structures. The three basic types of rotating machinery support systems, the types of base plates machinery is attached to, and problems to look for on foundations, base plates, concrete, grout, and anchor bolts. Uh, you are not going to have a lot of success sitting rotating machinery on a floor and hope that it doesn't move around when it's running. To ensure a stable operating position, our machinery is attached to some kind of a structure. The three most common ways we hold our equipment in place is with rigid foundations, inertia blocks, or frames. Going from right to left, here is a motor, fluid drive, and fan attached to a rigid foundation. This is a fairly large fan and right above the ladder is one of the two bearings that support the fan rotor. That bearing, the fluid drive, and the motor are sharing the same concrete foundation. The outboard fan bearing, which is not shown in this photograph, is supported on a different concrete foundation. Rotating machinery that is at ground level is usually held in place with a reinforced concrete foundation. A hole is dug in the ground. A temporary wood or steel frame is constructed that defines the volume boundaries. Steel reinforcement rods and anchor bolts are carefully put into position and concrete is poured into the volume and allowed to cure. A base plate or sole plates or chalk plates are then positioned onto the anchor bolts with a gap left between the top of the concrete foundation and the base plate or sole plates or chalk plates. Another form is constructed and grout is poured to mechanically bond the base plate or sole plates or chalk plates to the foundation. The grout is allowed to cure and the form is removed. After adequate curing time, the rotating machinery is then set on top of the base plate or sole plates or chalk plates. This is the most stable platform for rotating machinery and is extensively used in industry. A more detailed discussion on foundation design, leveling of base plates and sole plates, and grouting will be discussed in another tutorial. Not all rotating machinery is at ground level, however. Some drive systems are located on the upper floors of buildings. Here is a typical inertia block. A reinforced concrete slab is encased in a steel frame. The inertia block is frequently isolated from the floor on springs. Base plate or sole plates or chalk plates are typically bonded to the inertia block using grout similar to the monolithic foundations we reviewed in the previous slide. Shown here is an example of a frame. Frames are typically constructed from structural steel such as angle or channel iron or plate. The parts are welded together to construct the frame. The frame is then bolted to the building structure like the belt driven fan on the left or attached to a concrete slab or foundation via anchor bolts like the direct drive fan on the right. The base plates that our machinery is attached to are either cast, 
fabricated or solid. Shown here is an example of some cast base plates. Here is an example of a fabricated base plate. The base plate was constructed from channel iron and plate steel. In this particular case, a steam turbine and a centrifugal pump will be mounted on this base plate. Because of the size of this base plate, optical alignment equipment was used to check for levelness and coplanar surfaces at the mounting foot points for both the steam turbine and the pump rather than using a carpenter's level. Here is an example of a solid base plate. This particular pump has been sitting on some channel iron that had corroded. Solid steel plates were installed rather than replace the flimsy channel iron. Notice that there are some shims between the lower plate and the top of the subframe to correct a softwood condition. Softwood conditions can exist between any two mating surfaces. Also notice that there are shims under the pump feet. Shims can be placed under any type of rotating machine. These were installed to not only correct the softwood condition, but also help us when we went to align the pump in the motor. Also notice the removable axial positioning jack screw. The key word here is removable. Jack screws are really helpful until they get in the way when you are trying to install shims under a machine foot. Here is an example of a sole plate about to be set into position around the anchor bolts prior to grouting the sole plate to the concrete which had been chipped away to expose the aggregate in the concrete. Cement or epoxy based grouts should bond to the aggregate, not the floated and smooth concrete surfaces where just sand and cement are present. Here is a comprehensive list of problems you should look for prior to aligning rotating machinery. Cracked concrete bases or cracks at concrete joints. Water seeping between the base plate and foundation or grout. Loose anchor bolts or machinery foot bolts. Shim packs that are loose. Rusty shims. Loose or sheared dowel pins. Paint anywhere on a shim. Piping hangers that are loaded correctly piping expansion joints that are free to move, and loose piping flange bolts. I don't know about you, but in some cases, I can't tell if an anchor bolt is loose until I put a wrench on it. By the way, this loose anchor bolt didn't look like this when I first got there. I had to clean away about an inch of oily dirt and rust before I could actually see the nut and washer. Not all the places I go are as clean as a hospital or the plant manager's office. Over time, cement-based grouts can chip away and expose the sole plate or base plate. In this particular instance, there are several one-quarter inch thick plates that were used to elevate the machine off the foundation prior to the grout pour. This is not the recommended method for supporting or grouting machinery. As mentioned previously, a base plate or sole plate is supposed to be bonded to the concrete foundation with the grout acting as the bonding medium. There should not be a gap between a sole plate and the grout let alone shims stuck in there to make up the gap. I was tempted to just take the nut off the anchor bolt here because I don't think it was making any difference anyway. Well-designed foundations will last for decades. Some of our rotating machinery is located inside of buildings that is climate controlled 
and some of our rotating machinery is outdoors exposed to Mother Nature. When our concrete foundations, cement-based grout, and steel base plates or sole plates are exposed to rain, snow, intense solar heat, and vibration from the machinery, eventually the foundation deteriorates. When anchor bolts begin to rust or break, the grout begins to crack and chip away, and the base plate is no longer in a stable position, it is probably time to consider removing the machinery and installing a new foundation. It is up to us to periodically observe this deterioration and make an informed decision on when foundation repairs or replacement is warranted.